Hello viewers, I'm SB, and I've got some things to say about Blood Bowl. Uh, first off, to clarify, I'm mostly going to be talking about Blood Bowl, the game, the abstract rules structure that is Blood Bowl, and not Blood Bowl 2, the software product. Except to say this one thing. There are a number of good ways to resolve ties in Blood Bowl, I've seen them. And the thing that Blood Bowl 2 is doing is none of them. It's bad, fix it. Okay, on topic. I've played a lot of Blood Bowl over the years. I even ran a couple of tournaments a few years ago. And I love it. Blood Bowl is a great game. But Blood Bowl is very different from most games that I like. Uh, in general, I dislike competitive games that have randomized action outcomes. Randomization can be a very good thing in a game. It can add a lot of replay value and make the strategic decisions more interesting. But I want that randomness to be more like randomized setups or randomized situations and events that players then react to in deterministic ways. I think it usually sucks, right, to do a smart thing and then get beaten by another player who is doing a dumb thing because you rolled really badly, right? We've all had that experience. And uh, it bothers me less in single player games for whatever reason, which I guess is a thing that maybe bears some exploration, but that's not really in the scope of this video. So how can I like Blood Bowl when Blood Bowl is nothing but randomized action outcomes, which I just said I pretty much hate? Well, I think there's a couple of things at work here. One of them is the tone of the game's fiction. The entire concept of the Warhammer fantasy races putting aside their millennia-old civilization-destroying differences so that they can play a little bit of murder rugby together is it's fundamentally silly, right? And the miniatures and the or the player models if you're playing the video game reinforce that. The things like the dwarf death roller or the goblin special weapons players are impossible to take seriously. Uh, even the rules document has that kind of like that silly tone. So the fact that the game presents itself as a ridiculous bloodbath makes it a little bit easier for me to handle when a bunch of ridiculous stuff happens or one of my good players dies or something. Because within the context of the fluff, it's more funny than frustrating. Uh, the second thing is a management of expectations. The tone of the tone that I was just talking about is certainly a part of that. Because the game doesn't present itself as a serious contest of minds, I think it's a lot easier to let stuff like a string of events landing way off of expected value uh, slide with just sort of a, well, I knew what I was getting into when I sat down here. But the thing that's the really important thing, and the thing that makes this work, is that the game has a huge number of die rolls in it. This is, um, this is very similar to the way the randomness works out in uh, Warhammer 40k. Uh, it might not be totally obvious from watching gameplay in Blood Bowl 2 because there's only one line of the dice log visible most of the time, and so a lot of the rolls actually slide right past without ever even appearing on the screen. But it's not at all unusual for each player to roll 150 or 200 dice over the course of a game. Uh, if that number sounds crazy to you, think of it this way. Probably the most common action that causes dice rolls is the two-die block, right? We saw a lot of that. That's two dice right there on the initial block. If the block causes a knockdown, which should be significantly above 50% of the time, right? The reason we like two-die blocks is because they work. Um, then you're rolling another two dice to check for their armor, right? And then if that roll passes, which against some teams is going to be a thing that's happening 40 to 50% of the time, then you're throwing another two dice to check for injuries. And that's like a very common sequence. There could be more dice if you put in the effort to get a three die block, if you had to use a team reroll at some uh, point in there, uh, if both players went down so you have to double the armor and injury rolls. Uh, so you have all those dice in a two die block. And then uh, my experience from stat tracking while I was running those leagues tells me that it's pretty common for each player to throw 40 to 60 blocks in a game. I mean, the, all, the values that we saw most commonly were 40 to 60 blocks per game per player. So you have all of those dice times 40 to 60, and then you still have to add in ball handling rolls, uh, dodges, any dice that come from rerolls. You get your team rerolls, a bunch of skills let you free reroll. Uh, you get kickoff events, apothecaries, stuff like that, uh, people getting up from KOs. So this means that over the course of a game, you will trend pretty close to the expected probabilities, right? Your, your, the curve of your results will 
be pretty close to the expected curve. Your players will behave pretty much the way you expect them to in aggregate. Don't yell at me in the comments because you got three ones in a row in aggregate uh, over the whole game. Uh, but it's also a large enough number of events per game that in almost every game you will see something quite unlikely occur, uh, which is cool. That's Using a really huge number of random events with a fairly small spread of probabilities is a great way for the game to keep things behaving mostly as they should, while, each ma while making each individual event still feel risky, likely to go awry. Uh, which is cool, you know. But, so I've just spent almost six minutes talking about why I don't not like Blood Bowl. <laughs> uh, there's a lot to actually like in the design as well. The teams are different enough to really play differently, and if you've heard me talk about strategy games at all, you know I really value uh, that kind of asymmetricality. Uh, the randomized player advancement, the level up system, provides a lot of differentiation of experience even if you do end up coaching two similar teams or two instances of the same team. And the way the turnover mechanic turns each turn into a puzzle of priority management and probability optimization is just brilliant. There are some matches of Blood Bowl where every turn is a more satisfying strategy experience than some other entire games. Uh, but there's... There's something else, too. There's another layer on top of my enjoyment of the pure mechanical aspects of the game. Uh, I tried for a while to think of a good way to word this, and I could not, so apologies if this comes across a little bit messily. But there's something like... The silliness of the game's tone really encourages, in fact almost demands, that you get silly about it too, right? And that's an experience that I don't get to enjoy that often. <laughs> Which pretty much is my own fault. This just comes down to my own character flaws. There's like a whole class of games, right, that sell themselves pretty much entirely on the back of this idea that everybody can get together and just play the game and have a good silly time. And they're very popular. But for whatever reason, a lot of them just don't really land for me. And I'm not saying before anybody floods the, uh, the comment box down below with anger. I'm not saying that it's not okay for you to enjoy Cards Against Humanity or that there's anything wrong with you for doing it. I'm just saying that for whatever reason, I can't enjoy Cards Against Humanity. I just need there to be... The, uh, the, not Cards Against Humanity specifically, even just games in that class. I think I just need there to be a little bit more mechanical complexity underlying the silly stuff. Like, I need there to be more game there. Uh, I want to be being silly, but I also need to be solving a puzzle at the same time, right? And uh, that's not an experience that I can get from a lot of games, so I really treasure it where I can find it. That's where a lot of this, like, Nuffle punishes hubris, but Nuffle rewards audacity stuff comes from. Uh, a game of Blood Bowl where you and the other player are both enjoying the strategy game and really playing the strategy game, but also getting goofy about the fluff and nuffle and the dice rolls is one of the best experiences in gaming, in my opinion. So I guess that's it. That's all I have to say about Blood Bowl. Just those few simple things. Uh, um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this series. I really enjoyed making it. Uh, I hope that it did a good job of sort of displaying the scope of the differences between teams. I tried to play teams that were very different from one another. And I hope that if you didn't know what Blood Bowl is, this kind of sold you on the idea. Because I think it's it's very easy to have misconceptions about this thing, because they do not do a good job of marketing it at all. Um, if you want to see more Blood Bowl on the channel, don't worry, I have heard you. Uh, I'm going to try to put together some cool multiplayer stuff, but... It's going to be complicated, because I don't just want to play with strangers on the internet uh, for the reasons that I just listed above. You're not going to get that fun experience with most people on the internet. Mostly what you're going to get is they roll two bad dice rolls in a row, and then they throw a temper tantrum and abandon the game. So that stuff's coming if I can put it together. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you enjoy what comes next, whatever that turns out to be. We'll see you then.